Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about the concepts for multidimensional arrays. Now, do me a favor and check out the previous video if you need array foundations, and check out the next video if you need the code for arrays. Now, this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development, so we're talking JavaScript, React, Node.js, how to take all these different pieces of applications, work them together into real-world problems, so their, their goal is to basically give you what you need to survive in the industry. It's a very career-centric bootcamp, meaning their goal is to teach you a couple years worth of information, but do it in a matter of weeks, get you on your feet in a good job as soon as you graduate from the bootcamp. So very, very good. They also have housing at no additional cost, and if you can't make it in person, they do have classes online. So let them know I sent you their way. They'll give you $250 off. Link in the description. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit more about multi-dimensional arrays. Now what do I mean by multi-dimensional? Sounds fancy, sounds scary, it sounds like we're getting into some like parallel universe junk, but not really. <laughs> All we're doing is we're just talking about arrays inside of arrays. So arrays can contain anything, meaning we can create an array. We'll just call it stuff because you know, it's just stuff. And in here, we can put a number. We could even put a string. In fact, you could put a custom object in here, or you could put a function in here. So what we could do is we could say function, and we could basically just make a function on the fly, like so. So that's a function that does nothing. <laughs> and another thing you can put in here is an array itself. So you could put an array like so. So here we're adding an array with three elements and that's all inside of this bigger array called stuff. So the only way to get to this would be through stuff. So typically when you're using multi-dimensional arrays, it's not going to be just a bunch of junk thrown into a variable called stuff. Like that's a very bad thing to do. More than likely there's going to be a structure where every single item has some kind of meaning. So a better way to, to use multidimensional arrays would be to think of a table. So a common example that people use is a grade system. So if we wanted to do a single array, we might have something like let grades, and this might be, you know, some grade percentages. So 36%, 12%, 44%, and you know, my typical high school grades. So these grades might represent grades on a test, but whose grades are they talking about? This means if you wanted to have grades for multiple people, you would need to have multiple variables. So this might be grades for Caleb, and then we have another one, grades for Claire, whatever it is. <laughs> but that's really not the ideal way to do it because we don't want to just introduce variables because it's not easy to make things dynamic, right? Because then we're basically hard coding that stuff. We're not storing it in, in a data structure. So a more appropriate thing to do would be to make a multi-dimensional array. So ignore all this stuff <laughs> and let's start from scratch. So we have a variable grades and what this is going to do is it's just going to serve as a container for all of the grades. So we can just open it and then when we're done we can just close it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I definitely closed it. Let me move that up a little bit. There we go. Now inside of here, all we gotta do is we create more arrays. So we could have one in here, 36, 12, 44, and then end it. Then we can use a comma and put another array. Like so. And you can keep doing that to add more students' grades. And because JavaScript's very dynamic, you could have like the first element be the student's name or their student ID or whatever. You, you can basically come up with some kind of convention and you can follow that to basically understand how to interpret an array like this. Now I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to access one of these arrays that's inside of another array, <laughs> the only way to do that is through the original array variable. So if you think about these as individual elements, so just kind of giant blobs. <laughs> and let's say we want to grab 
the second blob. <laughs> so this blob right here, how would we do that? Well, we would say grades, and then inside of square brackets, we would use index one, because this is gonna be index zero, and this is gonna be index one. Okay, and this is essentially going to give us this element, which is just happens to be an array. So, since it's an array, why don't we just add another box and say what element we wanna grab of that. So if we wanted the entire array, boom, we got it. If we want an individual element in this array, then we just add another square box, square brackets, and we could say two, for example. So grades one, two is going to grab this element right here. So that is how multi-dimensional arrays work. It just works the same, just remember if you don't want the individual element and you want the array, then you leave it at that. If you want an element, you add that extra square bracket. So that is how multi-dimensional arrays work. Yes, it can get more complicated. You can have arrays of arrays of arrays, of arrays of arrays of arrays, and just arrays for days. So there's so many different ways you can do this and not every single array is going to have exactly three elements. That's just convenience. So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna assume everything is nice and square. <laughs> JavaScript is nice because it's so easy to, to work with. You can put basically whatever you want in here. But the consequence of that is that when we're working with it, we have to be more concerned that the data structure is not appropriate for what we're trying to do. <laughs> so keep that in mind, and we'll be going over some examples of how to work with arrays in the upcoming videos, and it's gonna be something you're doing forever. So make sure you understand arrays. Super, super important. Thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please do me a favor. Just hit that subscribe button and share this video with five of your friends, if you got that many. I'm not saying that in a mean way, I just think of like how many friends I have and like, I might be able to come up with five. <laughs> yeah, probably about five. Yeah, so not to get all depressing and stuff, but five is plenty for me and it's more about depth than quantity in my opinion. So I'd rather have one really good friend than like 10 shallow friends. And if you consider family members, then that number is much more because like I consider myself pretty close with a lot of my family members. So I would consider them my friends, you know what I'm saying? But what does this have to do with multi-dimensional arrays? I don't know. So peace out guys, I'll see you in the next video.